Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to the final uh, session of our three-day live workshop. If you're joining for the first time, my name is Namrata, and I'm working as a project manager for Phenomenal Metabolomics team at Ember EBI. Coming up next uh, is webinar on statistical workflows with Galaxy uh, by Dr. Etienne Thévenot from CEA. So good morning, everyone. So um, during this session, we'll see uh, how to use um, uh, Galaxy and the uh, online instances such as uh, Phenomenal um, to run statistical workflows. So um, my name is Etienne Devno. I'm working as a group leader in uh, computational metabolomics at CEA in France. Um, so really the idea for our um, team of people is uh, to, um, with those galaxy environments, is to bridge the two communities, which are on the one hand, the users um, from the wet lab, for instance, who have uh, beautiful data and uh, would like something which is uh, quite convenient to use to analyze them. So something which is web-based uh, and the opportunity to build workflows, so I chain multiple tasks in a user-friendly environment with tutorials. On the other hand, you have the developers who I develop new methods, new tools with uh, their own language and uh, would like to have something where they can uh, integrate their new tools, uh, whatever the original language of the, um, the code. Um, some place where they could gather all the tools for the community and um, have them uh, accessed in a quite uh, easy way and open source so that uh, each uh, program can be benchmarked and be uh, by the whole community that we know precisely what is inside. And both communities would like to have uh, shared workflows, shared data uh, to make reproducible science. So this is uh one of the main goal of uh, galaxy so this um, uh, environment which was developed about uh, more than 10 years ago more in the um, uh, ngs community and uh, now has uh, started for a couple of years to be used as well in the metamodernist community so you have seen this already uh, and we'll have a closer look at the statistical tools uh, to produce workflows and run them on, on the data. So uh, for us as a, a statistician, for instance, as a data scientist, we develop algorithm and uh, then packages in whatever the language, and we would like to have them integrated uh, into a workflow environment so that you, I mean, uh, people from the wet lab, chemists, biologists, clinicians could uh, use them in a quite convenient way, save their analysis and share them with other people. And this is quite conveniently done with Galaxy environments, which are actually online on platform um, such as Workflow for Metabolics or Phenomenon, as we'll see right now. So this is an example of one of the tools for feature selection we'll be talking about which uh, was developed in the team by Philippe Grinodo. So actually we can build quite extensive statistical workflows. So this is an example where we start with the processed data. We'll have a quick uh, word about this. Um, so we have a three table format uh, where we have uh, the data and the metadata. And uh, we perform some, uh, quite some um, normalization and quality control steps transformation before we do the actual statistics with an invariant hypothesis testing, multivariate modeling, for instance, uh, PLS, heat map, and feature selection. So such workflows uh, are available with a DOI, so uh, you can click and have access to the whole workflow and you can see which tools have been used and which parameters can be a good example of such uh, analysis. So now I suggest that uh, we 
have the demo together on the uh, phenomenal instance. So um, here we will talk about a particular data set, which uh, is from a human urine analyzed uh, by um, LCMS, uh, so mass spectrometry, high resolution. So it's a cohort of about 200 employees from CA Institute. And the objective is to study the variations of uh, metabolic concentrations in urine with age, body mass index, and gender within this cohort. In fact, so, a um, few hundreds uh, metabolites were uh, detected and analyzed. Some of them were annotated at uh, level one or two. And here we see that in our cohort, we have this age, body mass index, and uh, gender uh, covariates that we'll be uh, using in our statistics. So the, the whole data sets is available in metabolites with the number 404. If you go to the repository, you can have the full description and data um, available. Right, so um, now I will switch. Um, I will just say a few, few words about the, the format and we will switch to the, the demo online. So we have those three tables. So the first one is the data matrix. So you have the, the samples here, um, column-wise, and the, the variables and with all the intensities of the variables. And we have two additional tables for the information about the samples, which are here row-wise with, for instance, age, BMI, and gender information, and about the variables. Um, so the, for instance, the M to Z ratio and the retention time. And those uh, data will be used throughout the workflow and it's particular when the new, um, for instance, um, p-values will be generated, they will be added as columns in the variable metadata um, table. All right. So we'll see, for instance, during the, the demo, uh, an example of univariate hypothesis testing with the univariate module, an example of, of uh, PLS, so partial least square, so it's um, uh, classification, a machine learning approach to breed the model, a predictive model, and then a feature selection approach by a signer to um, identify the few metabolites, the few features which are really significant for uh, the, the model. Right. So let's switch now uh, to the... So here, I am on the um, main instance. So if you have any trouble seeing uh, what I am talking about, please tell me. Um, so this is the, the main public phenomenal instance that uh, you have access to, which is uh, hosted at MDI. I, I have actually logged in, and um, I'm sorry because I, I haven't switched the language, so it's still in French, but it's uh, identifying um, here a part in the menu. So you are not, you don't have to um, log in to um, use the tools, but uh, here we will um, go to the shared data part uh, to uh, retrieve, to um, download some of the, of the data and for this, you have to be logged in. That's why uh, I am registered here. At, uh, and you can register. Uh, you have seen this previously with, uh, with Pablo, I think, or other presenters. And uh, so everyone can have an account uh, on this instance, right? So what we'll be talking about are the tools here in the statistical analysis uh, part of the, of the tool panel. So we see that we have several ones. And uh, so those are, will be the one we will be using. So at the moment, my history, my analysis is empty. So the first thing I have to do is uh, to fetch the, the data. So the three tables I was 
talking about. So you have two uh, options. The first one is to have those files, which are simple flat uh, table files, which you can upload uh, like this from your computer. What we will do is use them, uh, get them from the, the shared data, which are already available on the platform. So if I go to the shared data um, history section, I see that we have two history, two shared history. So recall that the history is the workflow plus the attached data. So input and output data. So uh, if we uh, select this one, which is the, so the Sakurin, Sakurin is the name of the data sets. And uh, so we see that we have some kind of uh, information about this analysis. So let's have a closer look. So we see that all, all the data which have been generated uh, during this um, uh, analysis that we reproduce, so the, some kind of information about all those steps. Uh, so actually, here are the three table we need. So what we will uh, what we do is uh, switch to this history. Actually, when if you do that yourself, you will see here import the history uh, because uh, here I have switched to this history because uh, I'm the owner of this history, so it's switch. But otherwise, you have import so you, uh, but the result is same so you switch to the history uh, with the all of the input and output files so what we'll do is redo the analysis so for this i will first here extract the workflow right so at the end of the the tutorial will be fluent in French as well. So you have learned two things. Uh, so workflow built from history. So uh, so we create the workflow. So what, what Galaxy does is uh, it um, uh, saves uh, the actual uh, workflow which was used to produce all the, those data. So we say create the workflow. We look at the workflow by editing the workflow. So let's see what we have. So here are the three tables. In fact, what happened is that this workflow starts from Metabolites itself by downloading the study. So it goes to the MTBLS 404 on Metabolites, a TBI, and retrieves the, this um, study in fact, it retrieves only because that's what we asked. Uh, the processed data, we could also work on the raw data, but here what we want is the peak table. So, um, and uh, there is a conversion step to get from those uh, ISA formats from Metabolites to the uh, three table format I was talking to you about. And then, there are um, several steps uh, which are, for instance, batch corrections, because uh, we, you, you will see that we have some kind of signal drift and batch effect, so that needs to be corrected. Um, we have some kind of normalization step to, um, here we will correct for the uh, variations in urine concentration from one sample to the other by using the osmolality uh, value, which we provide in the sample metadata file. We will transform the data sets uh, with the locked-in transformation, which is quite a uh, cl classical way of, of um, uh, this is classical for uh, uh, LCMS data uh, to uh, um, stabilize the, the variance. And then we start with a PCA, the multivariate module, with some um, univariate taste, test, sorry, and then the uh, PLS model and the feature selection. So this is the whole workflow. So we see if we, yes, that 
you have the link so between the outputs from one module to the input of the other one okay all with all of three tables there are a few exceptions here for instance when one of the table is not uh, modified by the two um, it's not out uh, provided as an output so you have to for the data matrix it's the same one to go to the previous uh, module all right so now we'll run this workflow so we say run uh, it says okay be careful because you have made some changes you don't have saved them save them uh, it's not a problem because just to move some of the tools so it takes a few seconds so now he's um, uh, preparing the the whole workflow to be run uh, so we see we see all the modules that will be used. There is, yeah, there is one missing at the bottom, the file signer. If, um, for instance, uh, you can have a look at the uh, parameters that will be used, right? And uh, we don't modify anything at this stage. We, don't, we say that we would like all this uh, analysis to be um, sent to a new uh, new panel, new history. So, uh, okay, workflow constructed from history. Okay, it's a fine name. And we say run workflow. All right. So then the uh, computation has started. You can see if we go to uh, the list of the saved histories. So contrary to workflows, history are automatically saved. So we see here that the first um, tool is, uh, well, first output file has been um, already computed. So let's have a look at this history in particular. So it has started by going to the metabolites and uh, fetching the data. And now there is a conversion step. So the first steps uh, may take a few seconds, but it goes quite quickly. So if we have a look at the, for instance, the samples here, we see that we have uh, 235 uh, 34 actually, because the first one is only the column names. Uh, samples, we see we have a few, um, a small uh, summary of, of the data here. If, if we want to have something a bit, uh, the, the whole of the, the data, we have them here. Uh, so the, well, it's maybe a bit complicated to, to read everything. We could download them and open them uh, in, um, in Excel, for instance, which would be a bit more convenient. But what is interesting is that we have at this stage blanks. We also have pools in addition to the samples. So we have everything we need for the uh, subsequent uh, filtering and quality metric steps, right? So those are the samples. What about the variables? So at this stage, uh, we have 120 uh, variables. In fact, it's only the variables which have been annotated. You could have worked with the whole um, uh, data from the uh, XMS. So, but uh, here it, it's exactly the same. And here in the data matrix uh, with the, the sample names and uh, the um, the variable names as, as well. Uh, so, uh, and uh, some of the variables are not protected in the lines, but are protected then in the pools and the samples. Right, so if we have a look now at the uh, batch correction, uh, we can see if, so uh, you see that for this tool, four files were generated. 
And we can have a look at the data before the correction and after the correction. So all the dots here are one sample, which have been ordered with the injection order. And we see that we have two batches and uh, we have signal drift plus uh, batch effect. Uh, and uh, we asked for a regression on the uh, lowest regression on the pool values, which are red here. So at the end, we have some kind of very uh, flat, of course, uh, regression and uh, the signal drift and the batch effect have been quite nicely corrected. There is a, a slide here. Um, the beginning is not so well corrected because we uh, uh, the, the pools were not so uh, closely uh, reflecting the, the trend. But, well, if we look at the PCA, we see that I initially we had two groups with a lot of variation, and now we have the pools right in the center. So uh, we can process to the other um, steps. Uh, we have some kind of here, quality metrics to have a look not only at the PCA, but also at the, at the peak table itself, which has not been processed at the moment uh, yet. Uh, I mean, not transformed, so that's why there is little contrast, but we have information about the uh, minimum, maximum values, missing values, zeros, and we see that the pool CV here, uh, less than 30% is quite high, so we have a good quality data set. This would be the normalization. Uh, if I wanted to have a look at what has been performed at this stage, I could use this uh, redo uh, button and I would have a look at what was uh, asked to the um, computer to produce this data. So the normalization module was used and we asked to um, standardize by the osmolality, which was one of the columns of the sample metadata data which we provide. So we had this information about the, the samples and uh, we use it to uh, standardize. The data. All right. So if, so there is a transformation uh, step. Uh, so um, locked in transformation, some kind of quality metric check again afterwards to check that now. So here we have, um, an outlier, we have good contrast now, we have still an outlier here, that's why we use the generic filter to filter out this particular uh, sample. And then we are ready to uh, do the, the PCA, so we, uh, so as a first um, step, we would like to have an overview of the, of the data, so just perform um, a PCA. We asked to color the males and females here, for instance, to see if we already had some kind of um, clustering of the two populations, but this is not the case in the first two PCA dimensions. Okay, so what we do uh, now is look for all the variables which are, have seen piquant uh, difference in means between males and females. So for that, we need the univariate module. So all of those tools are here. Remember, univariate here. And uh, so what we see is that we asked to uh, uh, study this factor uh, by using the t-test and correction and false discovery rate um, uh, control of multiple testing. So we've got those, um, in fact, if we see the information, which is a text file, we see that we got 25 variables, which were significant, we got FTR at 5%, and we can have a look at the, uh, all of them as box, box plots. Next step is uh, go to multivariate, but this time in the, the predictive uh, way, so by using the uh, PLS. So in fact, it's exactly the same modules, but previously to do a PCA, we said that uh, we didn't provide any uh, factor here, Y response to a model. 
Uh, but now we say that we'd like to model this um, response and uh, so the, this module switch automatically to uh, PLS modeling. Uh, we, we don't, so we let the algorithm choose the optimal number of uh, components. And uh, what we get here, you see that this time the two populations are quite uh, uh, distinguished, quite distinct. So we check here on this uh, diagnostic that uh, the Q2 values are the Q2 value here, that the model is significant. Um, so if we perform random permutation of the uh, gender values among the samples and we rebuild a, mo um, a model, then the Q2 values of those random uh, permutated models will be um, lower than our here Q2 value, which is here 0.6. In, in our model. So it's this model is significant. This is very, very important to check with PLS or in machine, machine learning uh, uh, that you don't have overfits uh, so that you build the model on, on really on a meaningful signal and not noise because um, usually we have many more variables than, than samples. So this is the, an example of, of PLS. Uh, DA because uh, the gender is a qualitative variable, so it's uh, PLS DA. In fact, it's even all PLS, but it's, it's, it doesn't change much. It's uh, PLS modeling um, for classification. Um, and you could have used exactly the same module, but instead of uh, studying the gender factor, you could have uh, studied the BMI, uh, body mass index. Um, modeling. So this is part of the exercises or discussion I suggest uh, for you to, uh, um, to explore afterwards. And uh, the last module is a um, uh, biosigner. So how does it work, biosigner? Um, it, so you give uh, the, the three table as, as usual, and you, you say that you'd like to uh, model um, the. It, here it has to be classification with only two classes. So here we provide such a factor, so gender. Um, and what you get is uh, this kind of information. So let's have a look at the. Year. So what was um, performed by the algorithm is, uh, so we asked to explore three different machine learning algorithm, PLSDA, Random Forest, and SVM, Support Vector Machine. All of these algorithms, these models are uh, built independently. You could have uh, only look at the PLSDA modeling. It's, it's just to have a broader view of, of uh, many different algorithms with different mathematical background. But what is important is that it says that, for instance, for the PLSDA model, instead of using the whole, um, I think we had uh, about 100, how many did we have? Yeah, 100 variables. It said that with only the, the dark green one, the one, two, three variables, um, only those ones were significantly needed by the model for the prediction, all right? So if you look at the information in closer detail, you see that when you use the 120 variables of the full data set, you have some kind of performance of the model of 0.86. And actually, if you use only the S selected signature of only one, two, three features, you have a performance which is about the same. So, um, so this is very interesting to, um, uh, as a feature selection step, because uh, usually to uh, build a diagnostic, um, you need uh, very few um, biomarkers, a very restricted 
uh, signature, otherwise it's not uh, uh, convenient for routine uh, analysis. So this is the kind of information you get with the, this module, and you can compare with the, the other uh, machine learning classifiers. Some of the variables are uh, found, detected, selected by all of these uh, machine learning methods. Others are selected by uh, one or two of, of, the, of the approaches. So this is again interesting to compare uh, because those uh, uh, classifiers will not behave exactly the same. But it's important to note also that uh, if you rerun the uh, algorithm, you may have slightly different signatures because there is a um, step of bootstrapping within the uh, algorithm. You cannot explore all the combinations, so you have to find a, a kind of uh, a clever way to um, uh, to go through the, all of the combinations uh, to test only some of them, and uh, so signatures may not be exactly the same, but should be quite close. Uh, and uh, so this is something you can control with the seed here by uh, specifying a number here, for instance, uh, one, two, three, or whatever. Uh, you are sure that you will get exactly the same. Um, result uh, with the um, uh, algorithm. And this is important for demos, obviously, but for you, it's, it can be interesting to uh, restart the algorithm uh, a couple of times to, to see the sort of a, uh, feeling about the variation. And also to note that uh, uh, there may be other variables which are very correlated to those ones. So they have not been selected by the algorithms, but for you, for instance, maybe another one is an addict, or uh, and um, it would be more interesting not uh, to um, <clears throat> maybe not those red ones, but some which have because it's an iterative uh, algorithm. So um, uh, the the greener uh, means that it has um, been selected by uh, more steps. So if you look at those uh, in um, light green, it can uh, indicate that those are very uh, closely uh, correlated to those ones. So they have not been selected, but uh, for you, uh, they could be more interesting because um, uh, they could be easier to measure uh, as a standard uh, in MSMS procedure, for instance. So uh, not just to focus on the very a uh, few ones which have been uh, spotted by one run of the algorithm, but to uh, try to have a, a broad view by comparing the classifiers, by looking at the ones which has been also selected in A, and by rerunning the algorithm, right? So that's pretty much of the demo. And I have just a couple of slides to, um, uh, to end up this session. And then we can discuss about the questions. Uh, so, right. So now I'm back to the presentation. Uh, so those are the some of the examples we have discussed previously. About uh, another an interesting thing, which was um, <clears throat> achieved by Phenomenal is the sorry, the possibility to upload directly the um, data uh, from Metabolize within Galaxy Workflows. So this is a, a new uh, feature in the Galaxy world, and this was achieved by the consortium, um, and particularly by uh, Pierrick, uh, but also Pablo and, and, and many other uh, very good developers uh, from, from Phenomena. Another interesting thing uh, achieved in the team from uh, Steffen by Christopher Keys is to apply such uh, statistical workflows, sorry, um, directly to metabolite studies. So really to um, uh, 
to look at all of the studies which are in metabolites and to apply a kind of a very generic work, statistical workflow, as the one uh, I showed to you with univariate, uh, PCA, PLS, and uh, on the common line. And uh, so this was uh, achieved. And here is an example of running of the workflow on another study from, uh, from metabolites. All right. Um, just um, to mention that uh, we have um, a course in October about using Galaxy, Galaxy workflows on your own data. So um, if you are interested, please uh, you can uh, go to this link on the workflow for metabolomics. So the last uh, pre-registration Sorry, the last pre-registration uh, day is today. Uh, so be quick if you are interested, uh, email or, uh, but uh, be uh, quite uh, quick. Uh, so I wanted to thank the many very, very good people who have worked uh, on um, uh, all of those uh, tools and uh, infrastructures uh, in Waffle for Metabolics in Phenomenal. I wanted to thank you, all of you, and uh, I am ready for the questions. I think I have seen one. So I will be happy to answer to your questions. So I first see uh, questions about the identification of compounds. So uh, what steps did you follow? So <clears throat> uh, we have um, uh, there are some tools. So we have, you have um, seen, you have um, followed the, the session from Stefan where he presented the MedFrag and the um, MSMS tools. There are not so many at the moment uh, in Galaxy, but there will be more and more tools to help you annotate. Uh, for instance, in uh, W4M, we have some kind of um, query of databases um, like, like HMDB, or, uh, but you can also query your own databases, as you know, so you can enter your own spectra and um, uh, match them uh, with the MZ and uh, retention time. So, um, so there will be more and more tools. So I didn't present them uh, today. Uh, it may not be the strongest uh, part of the tools available uh, today, but there is a, a strong effort and in a very um, uh, next coming months, uh, there should be uh, a lot more um, tools available on Galaxy. All right, so there is a question about uh, the tools. So you have the, so I have um, <clears throat> sent the, the link. So if you have uh, specific questions about the tools themselves, uh, the methods, the implementation of the tools, um, you can uh, go to this link. And if you have questions about the uh, phenomenal instance, about the Docker side, about the cloud side, about uh, also uh, tools which have been, the, uh, I was mentioning the um, Metabolites downloader, then it's better to, uh, to ask uh, with the phenomenal channel because those are uh, features which are specific to uh, the phenomenal instance. So they are quite complementary. Yes. You do need uh, to uh, create an account on Webflow for Metabolomics, which is a very uh, straightforward uh, in a couple of, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, 24 hours. And, uh, and then you have your own private um, account where you can store your data and uh, you can uh, run your analysis. And when you decide and when you want, if, if you want, you can share them to um, all right, so if you were rejected because you use your Gmail account, 
then uh, it's very uh, sad, I think. Uh, well, I will. Uh, I can drop me an email, uh, and uh, I will try to see how because uh, because it surprises me. In fact, Gmail. Ah, uh, maybe we ask for uh, the thing is. Uh, you see, um, if you uh, the, the problem is that we. we it's important to check that the people who register are not robots. Uh, so that's why with Jmail, sometimes um, uh, it may be a bit um, difficult. Uh, so that's why it's important to, to check. But uh, feel free, for instance, in the support to write an email, uh, the address I, I gave previously, support at Worker for Metabolomics, and uh, to explain that uh, and we will find a, a solution, All right? so that user can help each other have to solve all issues. This is a, a really good suggestion. In fact, um, uh, there are some kind of, uh, in bioconductor, uh, the, the way people answer the, um, the issues is quite um, <clears throat> transparent for all the other ones, like a forum or a, so that uh, it's uh, it's not so redundant and uh, people indeed can. Um, so I think uh, we will um, we have already discussed about that, but we should progress on this. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. So thank you so much uh, for joining our sessions. If you uh, have been with us since uh, day one, thank you so much for your continued interest with Phenomenal. Uh, feel free to send us a message on Slack or uh, use the phenomenal contact form on the website, uh, which is also mentioned uh, in the slide uh, that we have shared, http phenomenal-h2020.eu. Home, follow us on Twitter for uh, more upcoming webinars. If you have any suggestions or requests for webinars, feel free to contact us. And with that, uh, thank you once again and uh, have a lovely rest of the day ahead.